Hello and welcome to the workshop. In this workshop we're going to look at approximate methods to assess the fundamental natural frequency of a bridge. This bridge was designed by Whitley and Bird. It's a bridge in Castlefield in Manchester and it's curved in form. It's got a 38 meter span with a deck approximately 2 meters wide. It is supported by an arch to one side which is eccentric which is connected by tapered eye sections, arms which then connect into the deck via stiffeners and the step deck has plates top and bottom rather and so it acts rather like a torsion tube. The rise of the arch is approximately four meters and we're going to look at some other views of this if we look there this is where we measured the worst case the natural frequency which is in the center of the bridge using an app from a phone which was designed by expedition engineers you can see in the background the radiating arms and the phone took measurements of the peak acceleration response and it gave an output for the natural frequency which we were going to try to assess by approximate methods. This is the underside of the bridge, you can see the stiffeners and it's plated to the bottom. The tubular stringers are roughly 300 millimeters depth we've assumed a certain size for them and for the purposes of this study we're going to ignore the balustrading and you can see to the background the arch as it comes into the far abutment. The, as we said the deck is approximately two meters wide so we're going to look at the sheet which is to assist and there are, we're going to check for two conditions one which is a straight span which is in pure bending and we're going to assume it's 38 meters straight span, 2 meters wide and what we're going to do is an idealized beam which is half the rise of the arch which is roughly 3.6 meters over 2, 1.8 meters and we're going to idealize that to work out a formula for the eye and the bending deflection as we see, classic bending deflection and the second component of the deflection in the middle of the bridge is by torsion and it's essentially a lever arm from the center line of the bridge based on the uh, center line distance from the abutments and the lever arm is 2.7 meters and P which is half the weight of the we're going to take half the weight of the bridge which is a dead load which is, was worked out to be 350 kilonewtons so that's 350 kilonewtons divided by 2 and we're given some of the parameters like the steel modulus and the 210 times 10 to 3 newtons per millimeter squared and g which is 78 times 10 to the 3 and for the torsion component we're going to work out the rotation and hence the deflection as you can see in the clip which follows it's really quite a lively bridge Hello, um, welcome to the explanation sheet and the rough calculations for the Castlefield Bridge, the Merchant's Bridge. And remembering the sheet which is provided, first of all, we assess the deflection as if it was a straight beam, and we use a sort of idealized beam section for this, which is be like quarter of the way along the span which would be an equivalent depth of around about half the total arch rise and we want to work out the neutral axis distance from the base of it and this is based on the area of the bottom section which is the combination of the plate the box and the CHS sections although you could have an idealized box and the Y bar is a standard formula working worked out from the distances from the base. The neutral axis comes to 43 centimeters or 430 millimeters. This is approximately a third of the height, very approximately. And we come to the formula 
for IY, which we use the areas and the distances from neutral axis in centimetres. And this comes to a value of 24.9 centimetres to the 4, which if we convert this to an equivalent millimetres to the 4, it comes at 24.2 times 10 to the 9 millimetres to the 4, and that's the inertia that we'll use. And the deflection is given by WL to the 4 over 384EI, where W is an equivalent load area of 4.6 kilonewtons per meter squared from the total weight that we had the total dead load that we had before so coming on to the second sheet we are now going to work out the deflection from that formula and the deflection this is bending only we recall, which is a, assuming a straight beam of 38 meter span. So the deflection due to dead load, and we we'll first of all put the formula down: 58, 5 WL to the 4 over 384 EI, and if W is 4.6 kilonewtons per meter squared and it's 2 meters wide, this gives us an equivalent line load on the whole section of 9.2 kilonewtons per meter. So, putting in the numbers for the formula with consistent units, uh, remember newtons and millimetres, we can work out the deflection from this equation, which comes to 49 millimetres. The live load deflection is a contribution of 10% of live load, this is for the natural frequency. We can pro rata from the dead and this comes to 3 over 4.6 which is live over dead times the 49 and divided by 10 and this gives us a value of 3 millimeters so adding these together to give us the total deflection from the bending component comes to 49 plus 3 which is 52 millimeters and now we can move on to the next section in which we are going to look at the torsion component and this is on sheet 3. And this is on our sheet 3. And we are going to use an idealized section for the torsion constant. And you see the hint sheets, if you like, the, uh, the worksheet that came with this. And and it, the hint sheet gives a way of working out the torsion, estimating the torsion, which is a total load P times the lever arm, which is the center line of the bridge from that straight line drawn between the abutments. And that's 2.7 meters. And the P is you take the dead load over half the span. So if it's 350 kilonewtons, we take half of that which gives us 175 kilonewtons and now the torsion comes simply from that the total torsion applied to the bridge 175 times 2.7 473 kilonewton meters this is owing to its curved effect and we can work out the rotation from this and the rotation comes if you take the center line of the whole width bridge and you assume that it's rotating about the middle and it's 5.33 meters wide. The torsion distribution is shown in the diagram which is t, t over 2 goes to each support and the length of which is rotating is L over 2 span over 2. formula for the rotation. Coming on to the next sheet, the calculations. 
this is sheet four and the torsion continued we're now going to work out for our idealized box section which is 10 millimeter wall thickness and it's 325 millimeters deep and it's two meters two thousand millimeters wide and the torsion constant J which we can work out which I obtained this formula from Roark for a thin wall box is approximately this figure if T is the same for both the walls and the bottom and top plates so it's 2T squared A squared B squared over T times A plus B where A plus B are the dimensions above 325 and 2000 so we put in those figures and in this particular instance we're going to use millimetres and this gives us a figure of 3.63 times e to the 9 millimetres to the 4 this is the torsion constant in order to work out the rotation we've given it centimetres to the 4 equivalent so from the previous sheet we got the rotation theta is TL over GJ and we now can plug in those figures remembering that we are using half the applied torsion, half the span for that length for the rotation equivalent and the G value for steel 78 times 10 to the 3 and the torsion constant will give us a rotation in radians of 0 0.015 and this is what we can use to work out the deflection of the section so just to recap that's the section and it's going to rotate about the middle and the total width of the bridge is 53300 and we take half of this to obtain the deflection which is downwards to the left hand side of the bridge is on the opposite side of the arch so the deflection is the width over 2 total width of the bridge times theta 5330 over 2 times 0 0.015 which gives us 40 millimeters which is approximately equal incidentally to the dead load deflection so the torsion is just as big a contribution to uh, the bending standard bending deflection of our idealized beam so now that we've obtained both components of the deflection we can now add them together by the law of superposition and this will be in our final sheet for working out the fundamental natural frequency first of all we're going to find the by pro rata methods the deflection from 10% live load for the torsion component and this is our sheet 5 so torsion continued and we obtain this by a pro rata method as we did for the bending component so the deflection 10% live load obtained from dead by pro rata so this deflection is given by 3 over 4.6 that's the live over dead ratio times 40 which is the dead deflection divided by 10 for 10 percent gives 2.6 millimeters so totaling up the torsion component we add the dead and the 10 percent live deflection and this is 40 plus 2.6 which comes to approximately 43 millimeters so now we obtain the total bridge combined deflection from the bending from sheet 4 and the torsion from sheet 5 above we add these two deflections together and the total deflection comes to 94 millimeters and now we're at the final stage of the exercise which is to work out the fundamental natural frequency and if we go back to the briefing for the, from the worksheet we can find the formula from this and the formula is 18 divided by root of the deflection 10% plus 
live load plus dead. And this comes to 18 over root 94, which gives us our natural frequency, our fundamental natural frequency, at 1.9 hertz. In other words, cycles per second. And we find that the in situ reading, which we took using the Vibrate It app, was a very similar value. And if you look on the website, you can see the output from that. This is very close to the estimate. And now we have an addendum, which is a, an addition, which wasn't part of the brief for the original workshop. And in this addendum, we are going to look at an approximate peak excitation or response of the bridge to give some idea of how it's going to be excited from a forcing frequency. So we look at the response excitation, which is acceleration, comparative measure of dynamic response. And the reference is structural engineering art and approximation, page 136-7, chapter 2.12. So drawing out the bridge, and here we have a person who's forcing the response, which is weight WP, and the weight of the bridge is W. So the weight or the mode or mass, which is the mass which is effective to the response, we'll assume is the full weight of the bridge, which is 350 kilonewtons. 3,500 kilograms and the forcing mass, forcing the resonant response, is the weight of a person which is 0.75 kilonewtons. So the peak acceleration comes from this simple formula, which is the ratio of A over G, which occurs at a resonance, and this is 1.3 alpha WP over 2 rho W. Alpha is a factor depending on the activity, which is walking, we put that back in the formula, and the damping ratio for a bridge is something like 0.2. So putting the values in, we come out with a response of 0.034, and if G is an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, approximately, then the peak acceleration from this approximate formula comes out at 3.4% of G. Now this is a high value for office activities, uh, sedentary activities. For a bridge it can be deemed as acceptable. Thank you very much for listening.